Hovering over the skies of a post-Christian society, we have spotted a man with a donut in one hand and rosary beads in another. Child, I'm about to whoop Satan's behind. He is boldly proclaiming truth and reason like no rigid Catholic ever has before. The David L. Gray Show begins now. Welcome in to the David L. Gray Show, voicing truth and reason. Got a mass nightmare for you tonight. It's um, it's, it's been quite a while since I've done a mass nightmare. I think it's been last month. I looked. I think it was like October twenty eighth. So <laughs> it's well over a month since, since we've done the, the last mass nightmare. So I'm rusty. I don't know really what I'm doing anymore. So we're gonna. I'm going to try. I'm going to try my best <laughs> to do the mass nightmare for you. So we will definitely see how this how this goes. And um, thanks for tuning in. If you can, please like and this um, this live stream so we get some more people in here as we get going. We're just going to hop right into this. Really no preface at all. We're going to just do it how we usually do it. We're going to take a look at the anatomy of a mass nightmare we're going to do that and then we're going to hop in so let me move that and yeah how you guys been doing though i know you have you have you missed the mass nightmares haven't really got a lot of uh have some people email me a few of them but i haven't really seen anything really that crazy out there and i think that's the really sad thing about the mass nightmares that you've seen one you've seen them you've seen a couple <laughs> so but yeah i got an interesting for you one today it's out of um oakland um saint columba and um yeah it's gonna it's get, get, gets a little bit spicy but let's take a look at the anatomy of a mass nightmare so we can understand how this goes down and what the type of things that we're looking at and some of the consistent errors that we see. So we we'll begin with just a paragraph and line item out of Sancro Sanctum Concilium from the Second Vatican Council, paragraph two, item three. It says, therefore, no other person, even if he be a priest, may add, remove, or change anything in a liturgy on his own authority. Therefore, no other person, even if he be a priest, may add, remove, or change anything in the liturgy on his own authority. So it's right there that, that the priest, anyone, does not have the authority to change anything that's in the liturgy. It's not, it's not under their purview. It's not under their authority. They have no right whatsoever to do anything but to say what's in the black in the um, Roman Missal and do the red that's in the Roman Missal. That's it. Full stop. Um, if, if a priest does anything other than say the black, do the red, then he, he is risking making the mass illicit, potentially invalid. So despite that, some of the things that we we often see in the in these mass nightmares, there's often times before the mass begins, they're going to be turned around, say hello to your neighbor. The altar oftentimes has some sort of Protestant signage, looks sort of woke. Oftentimes, there's no tabernacle visible. There's no crucifix, such as the general instruction on the Roman Missal says that there should be. The entrance possess procession is usually silly. Um, the music that they offer at the liturgy is often Protestant, is often performance-based. Um, entertainment has the entertainment factor. At the opening of the Norvis Order Rite, there's, uh, the priest can offer some sort of brief greeting. Typically, it's not brief. The liturgy of the word oftentimes deviates from the lectionary. Oftentimes, the priest celebrants will introduce each of the readings before they're read, which is odd. The children's liturgy, <laughs> you know, we can often see that in mass nightmares. Children are taken away, removed to some sort of offsite. The homily is oftentimes either a political stump speech 
or is offered by a lay person, which risks make again making the mass invalid. The universal prayers have, has a bunch of woke causes. The sign of peace is not peaceful at all. It's oftentimes distracting. Throughout the liturgy, the priest celebrant prefers his own words over what is said in the black and Roman missal. He likes to, he, he thinks what he has to say is more important than what God has to say. The rite of communion is oftentimes irreverent. We see a near 100% participation in the liturgy, despite the fact that, you know, we go to these churches' websites and, you know, confession uh, opportunities for the sacrament of penance of reconciliation are, are rare. So um, the concluding rites, the priests, the, you know, the mass seems to not want to end. The, the, the closing announcements where they just sit up there and read everything that's in the bulletin is oftentimes longer than the mass itself. So here's some keywords, some buzzwords that we typically use to describe a mass nightmare. They're anti-Vatican II. They're anti sancro sanctum concilium, which means that the, there's not a whole lot of Latin. The priest is not facing um, our, the source of our divine revelation, which is Calvary. He's not facing the East. Um, it's self-indulgent. It's distracting. It's all about the idea of this community. Let's be this community. <laughs> but it's outside of the communion with Christ, the, the liturgy wants to bring us in communion with Christ and through Christ each other. The liturgy is not there to bring us in a communion with each other as a matter of first principle. It's just not. Christ Jesus is the first principle, and through him we have communion with one another because through him we're one. It's a Protestant like praise service. Those present are uh, treated like an audience by the priest celebrant and by the choir. There's amendments to not can, cannot be what um, amended. It's just not serious worship, what we see in these mass nightmares. It's childish. Very few people in their 20s and 30s, illicit and valid heretical. Divinization is not on the table. So those are the uh, typical things that we see at every mass nightmare. Um, Iron Dog says um, we should probably... Uh, we should, maybe we should we should add this to the um, to the anatomy that the right of applause, <laughs> right? Yeah, I think we should add that. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to amend that. I'm gonna try remember to amend this. That another part of the anatomy of a mass nightmare is that there's always a lot of applause and the praise for human achievement. You know, so again, it's not about God. It's about the communion, right? Um, Iron Dog says, how I wish this very simple rule were followed by all priests I have known through the years who, by their own um, studio authority, routinely change far more than one element of the right. Yeah, and in fact, changing just one element can just invalidate the mass immediately. So, all right, so let's go ahead and get into the mass nightmare. Let me tweak one thing here. Man, I'm like really rusty. It's been so long since I've done a live live show. But I appreciate you guys um, subscribing. I'm um, liking the show. Please like um, this stream if you haven't already so we get more people in here. And I hope you're having a, a blessed Advent. I hope you're having a blessed uh, Feast of Our Lady of, of Guadalupe. And... Um, if you haven't yet, you can always hop over to my, please hop over to my podcast. I have an audio podcast as well. You can find anywhere you get your podcasts. Um, the one, uh, one that I do is called the liturgical sense of the readings of mass, the liturgical sense of the readings of mass. So I have a reflection there for the third Sunday of Advent. So, um, check that out and subscribe to that rate it if you can and um i have another, another show coming up wednesday this week I should have john henry weston he should be on the show sometime this week he might be that might be the interview you see on wednesday and then next week i'm interviewing a guy who used to be a freemason he's coming on the show as you know i used to be a freemason as well i spent about 10 years of my life in that so he'll be on the show and we're going to chop up chop shop 
on that. And um, so that's that's definitely going to be re- um, interesting. Yeah, so check out my audio podcast. The reflection I did this week this week is called The Liturgy Comes to Make Us New in Christ. So check that out. Let's get into this mass nightmare. This is St. Columba Parish. And as we do, we're going to put up the order Roman Missal and we're going to watch the mass and we're going to we're going to um, we're going to see what happens. Oh, before we get started, uh, started Jason Watson says, um, here's another amendment to the anatomy of ma- mass nightmare. He says, how about the right of hand sanitizer with his triple pumping <laughs> action? Yeah. Yeah, that's another. We, we saw the hand sanitizer come out a little some years ago with the um, what was that one flu called? Some sort of pig swine flu or something like that. Um, and then the hand sanitizer went away, and, and then with the COVID, it's come back and it's it's never gone. One one church I used to go to when I was still living in Belleville, this church, Our Lady of Snows. Yeah, guy was standing there before you receive communion, right? And he would like force pump you. It was like a mandated pump. It was, um, <laughs> it was like you could not receive communion unless you got pumped by this hand sanitizer. Which you know, and I felt sorry for people receiving on their hand, right? Because they had some fresh hand sanitizer, right? And here's the priest just placing Jesus Christ in the hand sanitizer, which you know, and then people had to eat the host. With you know just a dash of hand sanitizer, little marinade, little hand sanitizer marinated on the on Jesus Christ, which you know had to taste quite interesting. So, um, yeah. Uh, hey, David, love you. My daughter lives in Oakland. I'll be visiting and bring her to the traditional Latin mass. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Yeah, that'd be that'd be a, a good thing, especially after you see this one. So let's let's take a look. Let me bring things up here. Let me move some things around over there and add this. And so so this is where we're at, right? So this is the introductory, right? Um, and it says, and this is basically what it says, you know, there could be an entrance chant. The priest can walk in with the ministers. All right. The priest venerates and kiss the altar. Um, let me come down here. And incense. Right? That's pretty much all it says, right? So typically what happens in a mass in, in you know, like a Norris Order Mass is that, you know, there's just a basic procession. Sometimes there may be a minister carrying the Book of Gospels, right? That's typically what you see. Not as St. Columba. They do something we've never seen before in a Mass Nightmare. That's why I thought this one was interesting. Check this out. So you see the, the minister um, up there, she has a she's carrying the book of gospels as you see there and she's taking the book of gospels around to the parishioners now in the eastern orthodox right or you know in the, in the in the byzantine you know a number of your eastern rites right you'll you you'll see people come in and they'll they'll kiss the book of gospels right that they, they'll you know sometimes it's placed there a little bit for a sanctuary and they'll come up and they'll kiss it but this is the first time i've ever seen this in a norvis ordo I, I've, I've never seen anything like this where the person processes in and she's taking the book of gospels to each person and they're either kissing it or touching it this is just just a little bit weird <laughs> One, it doesn't belong there. We, it, it doesn't say that in the Roman Missal that this happens. Okay, only time in the Roman Missal where we see somebody kiss the gospel is the priest after he reads it. This feels a little bit Protestant to me. It does. Um, the idea that this is some sort of highlights of 
the mass that this is like the, the book of gospels is like the source and summit of our faith like for this strange reverent reverence to the book of gospels before the mass begins it, it just feels weird the book of the gospels the synoptic gospels uh, matthew mark um, Luke and John, of course, they hold a primary position in the canon because they contain the life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Yes, we definitely revere the Gospels above all other texts in the Bible. Yes, but in the Mass, um, it, it, is, it does not hold the highest position. The Gospels are not preternatural to the Mass like the Holy Eucharist is. Um, so it's 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 kind of it's really weird what she's doing here. Watch her go around. Like this lady kisses it, and like she's walking around like, hey, hey, who? Anybody else wanna? Anybody else? Anybody else wanna kiss the Gospels? You know, she's kind of looking around for somebody to give it to. This lady over here, she touches it. This guy touches it. She she touches it with two hands. She 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 two hands it. <laughs> the lady in the red with the mask. You know, a lot of people with mask here. I see. Uh, she's walking around. Anybody else? Anybody else? And you see the the two the priest, the maybe a deacon. I don't know, and some other minister. Oh, that that's the lady who's going to give the homily. That's Karen. And Karen's a real name. It's not something I made up. Her name is Karen. She'll give the homily later. And um, and they're rocking really slow because I guess this is what they do. Just, they just walk around with the book of Gospels for people to touch it and kiss it. She finds someone else. This lady just bows her head to it. Okay. And then she processes up to the sanctuary. I've never seen anything like this before. This is this is weird. And she places it on the altar. <laughs> and Paulina says, How much do we have to pay to get that man to stop singing? Oh, no, Paulina. We've just gotten started with this guy. Wait, wait, wait till. <laughs> I'm not even going to give it away. I'm not even going to give it away, Paulina. Just make sure you stay tuned or you come back later. This, this, this the organist is a piece of work. We, we, we're just getting started with him. Um, I do like the fact that they have a crucifix. All right, it's a, a rather large crucifix. Um, who was it that said? Um, Iron Dog said, yeah, it looks like everyone is like over 65. I mean, that, again, that's anatomy of a mass nightmare. I mean, we're hitting two of them, right? Everyone is pushing the Otagarian age, right? Nothing against Otagarians. I hope I'm there one day myself. Hope I become... Not to Gary and hope I'm in my 80s one day, God willing. Um, but yeah, that's who's at mass today. Everyone's at that's, that's around that age. The procession was messy. It was messy. That's what it was. It was, it was a taste of prost and it was messy. <laughs> it was a messy procession. All right. There was no order, no decorum, right? Uh, yeah, so, yeah, so we're, we're we're hitting two right off the bat. Look at this person. Come, you see this person coming up the side? Who is this? Who is this person coming up? Look at this person coming up on the right side. They're in all black. 
and they got a black hat hat on. It looks like they were like a, a black fur coat in Oakland, California. It looks like a pimp. Look at this person. I didn't notice this earlier, but this person just strolls in. Yeah, look, look, look over there underneath the sign there. What is she doing over there? Who is this? They're just meandering over there with this black fur coat and they're spinning around. Voss is Das. Okay, they disappear for a moment. Now they're about to come back out. person oh, like, looks like a pimp like where my hoes at <laughs> Got the look. who's this pimp oh my gosh it looks like a pimp named slickback look this <laughs> that's a straight pimp oh my goodness <laughs> That's a pimp named Slickback. I don't even know what's going on now. What part of the mass is this? I don't even know where. Let me let me reduce this. I, I don't even know where we're at. Did, did, I'm assuming the priest kissed the altar. What's going on? Side down, where eyes of the blind. And the ears of the deaf hear, and the tongue of the speechless sing. I, I don't know what part of the mass that is. I don't know if that's some sort of antiphon, some sort of. I, I I don't I don't I don't know. Form us, so oh God, who are. Oh, oh, okay, okay, some sort of. Some sort of lighting candle thing. Give me one moment here. Patient expectation into a people who say yes to your will. Proclaiming good news with our lives and with our words and in our relationships. Proclaiming your truth, doing your justice and sharing your mercy. All right. With confidence, we await the coming of your son and the day when we... Okay. All right. So, all right. They're doing something with lighting the candle. All right. Let's 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 move forward. Our sinfulness and brokenness. And as for... i got a couple of folks out here. Father, be with you all. Good morning, Lord, and let the church say... Amen. All right. <laughs> There's a pip named Slickback. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. It's just it's just too cold in Oakland right now. I mean, it's just too warm. I, mean, I know it's wintertime in Oakland, but come on. Oakland, I mean, what is it like 65 degrees in the winter? All right. Why, what is this person doing wearing this full fur coat, mask, and hat? That's you would only wear that if you're a pimp, All right? Only if you just got a couple holes on the side. That's the only reason to dress like that in Oakland, right? That that's, but you know, God bless the pimp for coming to mass. I mean, the mass is where sinners should be, right? So I'm not going to disparage a pimp coming to mass. You know, God, God bless him, right? He, he's in the right place in Oakland. She's and in the choir. All right, let's get the mask going. <laughs> Instead of Zoro. Because <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Zoro, huh? The Holy Spirit. All right, all right. The of Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the love of God the Father be with you all. 
Good morning. <laughs> and welcome to the celebration of Gaudete Sunday. Gaudete means rejoice. It's our ancestors' way of telling us to lighten up. Lighten up in a crazy and mixed up world in the midst of the Christmas season. Expectations are dumped upon us. Lighten up and relax because God is still in control. Amen. There's the applause. There's the applause. Now, it has been a long time since I've been here, and I'm just, just, just curious. How many, how many of you recognize me from the time? Oh, my goodness. Come on, man. Now, like I said, let's take a look at the order of the Mass, right? So I guess we're, we're here Right. Number three, the priest or deacon or another minister may briefly introduce the order of the mass. Right. Right. Right there. Right. The priest or deacon or another minister may briefly and in, briefly introduce the faithful to the mass of the day. So that's where we're at. But father somehow just immediately wants to like make it about him. <laughs> like He just immediately like from the jump, I like, say, I'm going to make the mass all about me. I haven't been here in a while. <laughs> Anybody remember me? <laughs> really? Is that is that your concern right now? Like, who remembers you? <laughs> That's just weird. I mean, just imagine you're like you're a priest, right? You're like in persona Christi. Like the mass is supposed to be the mass is supposed to be all about Jesus Christ, right? But your your first go to is like some sort of like meet and greet, some sort of like high school reunion. Like, anybody remember me? <laughs> That's your go-to, right? Jeez, I haven't been here in a while. Anybody remember me? Like, who says that? Like, maybe when you go, like, go to a bar, maybe, I don't know. Anybody remember me? <laughs> Jeez. Come on, man. Passed. Okay, show of hands here. Uh, how many of you? I'm a new face. I'm a new face. Okay, quite a few people. Yeah, yeah. And how many of you out there? How many of you out there are just just trying to forget? <laughs> uh, okay, all right. I got a couple out there. Yeah, I got. That, that's all right. That's all right. You know. You know. We humans are good at forgetting. We are good at forgetting. What I like to forget is the stuff. My sins. My brokenness. All of us. We we have this high expectations about living as Jesus. We do profess a high ideal in our following our Lord Jesus Christ in this world. Amen? Amen. Yeah, and I like to forget the times that I don't live up to that. But that doesn't make us bad. That doesn't shame us. But that we recognize our sinfulness and brokenness in order that we may ask for God's grace and mercy to come into our lives to lift us up. Yeah, that was a good one, Jesus. That was a good one, Jason. If, if a priest asks, like, <laughs> one minute into the mass, <laughs> how, many, how many of you, you, you know you're, you're in a mass nightmare. That, that's a dead giveaway. Like, yeah, if a priest says, how many of you? <laughs> because, one, first of all, you know that you're, like, in a small parish, right? If, like, if the priest says, how many of you, like, he actually goes around and count, right? So you know there's not many people there anyway. Like, how many of you? And it's, it's, it feels like, I mean, that's like the, uh, uh, like a buzzword of a mass nightmare that is like an audience. They always treat the people like an audience. It's always an audience. Imagine if the priest was facing Calvary. Imagine if he's facing East at Orientum. He doesn't have time for this. He doesn't even know who's there, really. He doesn't know who's there. It's, it's not an audience. That, that's, that's what's so sad about it. And to be more like Jesus in this world. For that reason, we pause at the beginning of this celebration to recognize our sinfulness and brokenness and ask for God's mercy, pardon, and peace. You came and fed the hungry and healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. You came and challenged and provoked those who were powerful and rich. Christ, have mercy. You came and died and rose that we might have eternal life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. 
Gracious God, your people look forward in hope to the festival of our Savior's birth. Give us the strength to reach the happy day of salvation and to celebrate with hearts full of joy. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. All right, so it's Advent, so we did not do the Gloria, right? That's that's that wasn't anything to be alarmed about. Um, it looks like in the prayer that he offered was some sort of um, collect prayer. Yeah, it looks like he did a collect. And now we're moving into the liturgy of the word, right? A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The desert and the parched land will exult. The steppe will rejoice and bloom. They will bloom with abundant flowers and rejoice with joyful song. All right, we're just going to go ahead and save some time. All right, we're just going to go ahead and assume that um, the readings were normal. We didn't see the priest do like an introduction to the readings. This lady looks just a little bit confused. A reading from the letter of St. James. All right. We got the second reading. Okay, we got some dancing. Hold on. Okay. All right, so here comes the gospel reading. It looks like before the gospel reading, these people like do a little bit of a, a little bit of a song and dance at St. Columba. Okay, let's take a look and see what they do. I like that lectern. It has a whole light. I like that. I had it cost at least $5,000. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at Zorro back there. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, just in case you didn't get the lyrics already, they go ahead and they post them up there in the right hand corner. Do you, <laughs> Jesus Christ is Lord? Hallelujah. go ahead and assume that he knows how to read the gospel all right let's see what we got next of the Lord. All right. so at this point in time he's supposed to kiss the gospel he looks like he's he puts on his mask first so let's take a look at this so after the gospel reading <clears throat> he kissed the book um and 
he says quietly, through the words of the Gospels, may our sins be wiped away. This is a very important intercessory prayer um, of non-sacramental absolution that the priest is supposed to pray on our behalf. Let's let's take a look and let's see if he prays this very, very powerful prayer of intercession on our behalf. Huh? No, no, I don't see a kiss. I don't see any prayer. Nothing. Just more of this. Looks like a procession of the gospel back to its um. Jesus Christ is Lord. And that's very interesting at this parish, how they like give the, the book of gospels like a, a place of prominence as some churches will give the altar. I mean, it looks like some Jewish synagogues, how they would place the, the book of Torah in like a, a place of prominence in a synagogue. They're doing that with the gospel, which is, yeah, it's, I've never seen it in any other church but St. Columba. He never kisses it. That's strange. I mean, what did you think about that? I mean, the priest just, he, I mean, he never kisses the book of the Gospels. I mean, like it says, doing the red. He never says, looks like he never says the prayer intercession. He may have said it internally. I mean, who knows? Um, it says quietly, not mentally. So it just kind of, I don't know, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed by that. Um, I, I, I sort of get why he didn't want to kiss the book. I mean, the book was just going around like, like Halloween candy at the beginning of the mask. All right, yeah, I, I see why he doesn't want to kiss it. Everybody had their hands on it, all right. Everybody was kissing it. I mean, he's an older guy. He looks like an Atagari himself. I mean, he's he's in that you know in that risk group of people who can really you know be harmed by COVID. I, I get why he doesn't want to kiss it. I get it, but um, I don't know. I, I guess that's <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> oh man! All right, so now we're at. The um, so where we're at now, so we're at the homily number 17 says, Then follows the homily, which is to um, be preached. Um, who says it here in a Roman Missal? Then follows the homily, which is to be preached by a priest or deacon on all Sundays and holy days of obligation, all the days recommended. And I also like to direct your attention to the general instruction of the Roman Missal if I. <clears throat> If you may so in, indulge me here, um, in, in number 66 of the general instruction of the Roman Missal from the Vatican, from headquarters, it says in number 66, the homily should be ordinarily given by a priest celebrant himself. He may entrust it to a con celebrating priest or occasionally, according to circumstances, to the deacon. But Never a lay person. All right, let's take let's take a look at the footnote here. So this comes from Codex um, Unris Canon Canon Law six seven six point one. Also, Pontifical Commission for the Authentic Interpretation of the Canon Law is also from a response to a, a question. Um, seven six seven. Um, so it has this. This is just like well documented. Let's take a look at. Let's take a look at this canon law. Let's see what comes up. Seven six seven. All right. What what canon law was that? So <clears throat> seven six seven six seven. Uh, so it's going to be in here somewhere. Seven six seven. Okay. Among the forms of preaching, the homily, which part is part of the liturgy itself. There's something I always say in these mass nightmares. People always say, "Oh, David, oh, David, 
if a lay person gives a gives a homily, it doesn't invalidate the mass. It doesn't invalidate it. Is you know because um, the 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 liturgy sort of stops during the homily. The homily is not part of the mass. It's something else, which is like the dumbest thing I ever heard in my entire life. Like all of a sudden, like there's some sort of like pause in the liturgy and the liturgy is it in the liturgy like stops for the homily and then it picks back up again that's just dumb like anybody who says that should have their their parents brain examined so it says well it's part of liturgy itself and it's reserved to a priest or a deacon this is canon law um is preeminent the homily in the homily the mysteries of faith and norms of christian life to be explained from the sacred texts <clears throat> during the course of the liturgical year. Um, let's see if it says anything else about only a priest. I think that's all canon law is going to say. <clears throat> so, so despite, so here, here, so this, this is, this is where we're at. And we're kind of like undefeated. The Roman Missal here says that it should be, only given by a priest or a deacon. The general instruction of the Roman Missal says priest, deacon, never a lay person. Canon law itself, the law of the church, which we're all bound to, says that it cannot be given by a lay person, just by a priest or deacon. Yet, here at St. Columba, <clears throat> here comes Karen. And this is this is typically the case at mass nightmares, right? If if a lay person is going to give a homily, for some reason, nine point nine times out of ten, is always a woman. Very rarely do we see a man come up and give a homily. We've seen it. Actually, we've seen it twice over at Saint Sabina in Chicago with Father Flager, who's been reinstated. Uh, I just saw it today. Uh, from another child molestation, some sort of pedophile alleg allegation. That's the second time he's been exonerated from that. But yeah, over his parish, yeah, we, we have seen men give, but typically it's always women, right? So it's, it's it feels like there's some sort of agenda with this, right? Hallelujah, Jesus Christ. And I rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, the rest is Lord. Hallelujah, the rest is Lord. Hallelujah, Christ is Lord. All right, everybody. Here's Karen. Karen is, um, we're, we're not going to listen to this whole homily because I think we got some more interesting things to get to besides this, but we'll listen to a little bit of his homily, this homily from Karen. Um, I just think it's funny. Her name is Karen and she's about to lecture us. And um, yeah, so I mean, the mass is definitely illicit at this point. Definitely illicit. The mass can only be presided over by a consecrated priest, a deacon can fill in some role in the liturgy, but that's all that the liturgy is reserved for as far as celebrants go. And as far as um, the, the, the extent to which a deacon can participate, no room in a, for the laity whatsoever to somehow con celebrate or to assist sacramentally in the liturgy, yet here is Karen assisting sacramentally, if not concelebrating the liturgy. So the liturgy is immediately from this point forward, at least illicit, if not, I do argue invalid because I do see that the liturgy, the homily is part of the liturgy. And now we have a lay person sort of concelebrating or really assisting to the degree to which a deacon can assist, and she's not ordained. So I, I, I do argue that lay homeless invalidate the mass. Um, but, you know, 
is at least illicit. And and Karen, I think, is just a horrible homilist. I mean, she she can't even sing. I will rejoice. I will be glad. I will praise God who holds my life in his hands i will praise the father i will praise the son oh and i will praise his spirit forevermore and i will rejoice I will be glad. I will praise. Boo. Oh, Boo. Who, who, if this is like the, like, like the Apollo theater, um, the Sandman would have come out by now and, and taken Karen off and flagellated her. If this was any talent show, Anywhere in the world, she would have been booed off and had like tomatoes thrown at her. This is completely unacceptable that she calls herself some sort of quasi presiding priest up here or deaconess. And she gets up here and sings this, this atrociously. This would be like me getting up there and singing. All right. I, I, I wouldn't do that to anyone. I, I want to fit anyone's ears like that. People had come to the mass to worship Jesus Christ. Not hear Karen sing off note and off key. That 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 was atrocious. People who cannot sing should not force their singing on others. Anywhere, just because you're at the mass, Karen. Just because it's at the mass, we don't have to indulge you. Like, just because we're Christians, like, we have to sit there and applause to somebody who can't sing. Everyone who's sitting there at Mass hearing Karen sing the song is not pleased. Everyone's asking the same questions. Who does she think she is? Right? Not Beyonce. Not Whitney Houston. Right? She, th this is this is just horrible. Right? I, I don't get it. I don't again. I'm, I'm glad she has the color rose on, right? She's she's matching with Godate Sunday, Joy Sunday. I mean, that's nice, but Karen, no, no girl, no boo boo. We we not gonna sing. <laughs> we we not gonna sing at mass with that voice. That that's horrible. I'm I'm not happy at all. In his hand. I mean, just her singing made this a mass nightmare. All throughout the year, we hear report after report. We watch the news, we listen to it on the radio, and oftentimes we hear the negative. They say they reserve about five minutes at the end of most broadcasts for something positive to leave you on a positive or up note. But the first 25 minutes are usually negative things. We hear breaking news that the Gun Violence Archive just recorded 625 mass shootings this year as of December 9th. I didn't check the website today. On the local front, as of this year, the total population of homeless in California has reached 161,548. That exceeds the total population of the entire city of Hayward. The news from around the world tells us it's estimated that 48 million people in 10 countries are suffering from acute hunger due to food scarcity linked to the ravages of climate change. When we listen to the news, we realize there is destruction all around us, ruin, brokenness, some destruction is of our own making, and then there's destruction that is completely <clears throat> out of control. All right. So, I mean, how long do we have to listen to this? Like we said, so 
St. Columbus kind of hitting it out the ballpark, right? We we got the the goofy procession. We we got the applause, right? Um, what else? We got the the lay homeless. And not only do we have the lay homeless, but we got the a, a double, right? We got we got a double for our trouble. We got the lay homeless who's giving a woke homily. She's up here talking about some sort of I don't know homeless crisis, whatever. You know she voted Democrat, right? It doesn't. So it doesn't. I, I don't even hear what you're saying. It, it's I, I don't I don't I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. I, I know this goes on for a while. So we're at we're at. 20 about 20 the 24 minute mark let me go ahead to the 20 29 let's see if she's still talking five minutes later Dug she is in deeper much like our current state of affairs where we often witness people who are committed to bad decisions even though they live in misery when i thought about this it reminded me of a scene from a movie called eat pray love and it's a movie about Elizabeth Gilbert's journey of self-discovery. I didn't win any awards, but I really appreciated a lot of the messages that ran through the movie. So Julia Roberts played Elizabeth Gilbert, and it's a scene where she's visiting the mausoleum of Augustus in Rome, and she compares what she sees to life. We all-, all right, so we hit number three, right? We got we got a lay homeless talking about a homeless crisis in California. Now we have a lay homeless who's also bringing in pop culture into the homily, right? And she's she's talking about the movie Eat, Pray, Love. I don't remember ever watching that movie, but I remember it was really a, a really popular book. But I thought it was like. A bunch of hedonism, right? Eat, pray, love. I, I, I didn't think it was anything had to do with Christ whatsoever. I mean, tell me if I'm wrong, but uh, uh, that's my memory of the book. But here's Karen bringing that book into the homily. I don't want things to stay the same. Settle for living in misery because we're afraid of change, of things crumbling to ruins. I looked around this place at the chaos it endured, the way that it has adapted, burned, pillaged, and found a way to build itself up again. And I was assured, maybe my life hasn't been so chaotic. It's just the world that is. And the real trap is getting attached to any of it. Ruin is a gift. Ruin is the road to transformation. And we must always be prepared for endless waves of transformation. The process of change is the process of destruction and creation. It's a shift in energy that requires work. And so if we translate that to our spiritual lives, it means that in order to make significant change, we have to break old bonds those old conventional ways of doing things. I've done it this way all my life. Those oh, my goodness. So, um, okay, so, so, you, so, okay, so Iron Dog says that the book Eat, Pray, Love had nothing to do with Christ. Okay, so, all right, all right my memory is well. Um, Michelle goes, Bear goes, uh, share some more details. It's about a, a girl who found a guy in, in Hinduism. Really, that was her journey. That's the book we're talking about in a homily on, on a third Sunday of Advent. Like Yvonne said, Yvonne said, uh, it's, it's about John the Baptist. Um, he sends the disciples over to ask Jesus, Are you are you the one to come, or should we wait for someone else? Right? He's about he's about to get his head chopped off. Um, the readers are largely joyful, right? And the Jesus, the answer that Jesus gives John's disciples was really just to reiterate what we heard in the first reading from the prophet Isaiah. Prophet Isaiah was saying that the one who come will, you know, he'll heal the blind, he'll the cripple will walk, uh, 
all these things. And Jesus told John's disciples, yeah, go tell him that, yeah, the, the blind see the lame walk, right? So it, it's a, it's a beautiful, some beautiful um, readings that the, the, the luxurious put together. Yeah, Karen wants to talk about eat, pray, love. <laughs> There's so many places you could go for Gaudate God, Sunday here in, in year A in the Norvis Ordo, and she's going to eat, pray, love. It's it's, it's crazy. Um, <laughs> always like that sanitizer comment. Uh, what else are you guys are talking about? Uh, Yvonne says, Karen, maybe if you change your vote, that's scary. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't listen to leftists talk about anything that's going wrong in society because they vote against. Wait, wait till we get to the universal prayers. Just, just wait. There, there's more on that. Uh, so I saw a whole, what I have to say. Uh... <laughs> Polly says, "Sadly, this is easier to listen to than the one guy singing." <laughs> uh... Oh my god! I'm beginning that her singing is better than her homily. That's Wow. Wow, Margaret. Wow. Margaret Mary, my friend. Wow. That's whew. That's <laughs> that's deep. Oh. <laughs> AC they had to cut off John the Baptist's head because of climate change. Yeah. <laughs> Michelle Bear only saw the movie. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we're right now. We're at um 3110. All right. So I'm gonna skip forward about six minutes. Another five minutes. Let's see if Karen is still going at it. So we're at 31. Let's go to 36. Let's see. But we oh my goodness. Oh my god, that's the thing about lay homeless. They get their like their one shot, right? <laughs> Who's that song from Hamilton, the play? I'm not gonna throw away my shot. I'm not gonna throw away my shot. Did they get one shot? I think Eminem the rapper said as well in the movie Eight Eight Mile. You only get one chance to blow, whatever. These people, they, they get their one shot, right, to give a lay homily, and they just go on and on and on. Like, I'm, I'm not going to blow my shots, right? I'm, I'm, this is my chance to be a priest. I always wanted to be a priest. And so they always get these long homilies. It's crazy, these lay homilies. I just can't. We have Romans 8.24. Oh, now she's giving scripture exegesis. Romans 8.24. Was that even a reading? No, the reading was from James, wasn't it? Wasn't a reading this week from James? Yeah, it's from James. She's in Romans. This isn't even a reading for today. What, what is Karen doing? And we're told, for in this hope we were saved. By hope, but hope that is seen is not hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? With this hope, we will strengthen our feeble hands and our weak knees. Remember, nobody, that what I told you earlier is that change is a shift in energy and it requires work. So I'll show you. Oh, she's coming down now. She's stepping down off of the big lectern out of a tree stump. Is that a real tree stump? You got to think that's a real tree stump? I bet it is. If we want to strengthen our feeble hands and our weak knees, this is how we do it. We come before the throne of grace and we seek his mercy and we seek his grace to help strengthen us, to get through these desert and wilderness encounters and, and continue to strengthen our joy in the process. But I know many of you are saying. Now, now that part, 
th- that part was pretty impressive. I mean, Karen had this little thing that she wanted to say because- um, about the altar, right? And she actually came over to the altar and she um, portrayed what she was saying, right? Just, just imagine that, right? That, I mean, that's that's like that's like just upper level speaking ability, right? And Karen, you know, I looked her up online, by the way. You know, you know, I did, you know, Google her. You know, she's actually in the medical profession, but. Um, and she does really well. You know, she, she's she's a highly qualified medical professional. And um, so I, I think this is what she does. You know, she does speaking and things like that. All right. So she's not new to speaking. But this right here, this is like, this is some high level speaking ability where you can like say something and then you also demonstrate what you're saying. Ooh. Ooh, that's that's top notch right there. Karen pulls it off. She wants to talk about the altar. She comes over to the altar and she kneels in front of it. Wow. Just imagine just imagine if you're at mass there at St. Columba on this third Sunday of Advent. You had no idea you were gonna hear from a lay homeless who like acted out their words. That's impressive. Mercy, and we see this grace to help strengthen us, to get through these desert and wilderness encounters and, and continue to strengthen our joy in the process. But I know many of you are saying, I can't bend those knees. So if you can't bend your knees, you take a seat and you position yourself in your space and you come to the Lord in prayer and you strengthen those feeble hands and you strengthen your heart. Yeah, I think that's a real tree stump back there. I think that's like a real tree stump. It looks it looks real. It looks like like a petrified tree stump and and then next to it there's like a little bear. You see that bear down there? Isn't that like the isn't that like the the mascot of California? Isn't there like the golden bears or something like that? Am I wrong about that? Is that the the bear? Is that the mascot? I mean the um is that is, is it called a mascot? Yeah. Like in Ohio, we had the Cardinal. Isn't like California the Bears? Look like they have a bear down there at at the lectern. And I think that's a real petrified tree stump. Yeah. So we're at 37.50 now. Let's move forward another five minutes to 42 and see if Karen is still going at it. All right. So in- oh, heck no. You got to be kidding me. This woman has been talking for what? 25 minutes already? We're at 42. We started at what? Let me go back to 22. Let me just give a solid 20 minutes. Let's see if she's there. I didn't check. Oh, my goodness. That's 20 minutes right there. Let me go to 17. No, she's not at 17. But she, she's she been talking for over 20 minutes about what about what about what 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 is there to say in a homily that's 20 minutes long i i, I know it's cultural i mean i know you know i've, I've been to puerto rico I've been to Costa Rica. I know culturally <clears throat> some homilies are longer. Parts of Africa. Yeah, I, I get it, you know. But 
we don't do this in the United States. We don't, <laughs> we don't, we don't do this. We don't do this. 10 minute homily. All right, if you can't say it in 10 minutes, if the homily is longer than the the the, the liturgy of the Eucharist, then you you've done you've done a homily wrong. That, that's how we do it in the United States. And I think that's the I think that's how we should do it. I don't think the homily should be longer than a, the prayers, the prayers of consecration. I, I just I just don't. I don't know. That that's just me. Um but this is this is just phenomenal. This is a phenomenal. We're, we're at 42 now. Let's go to 47. Let's see if we can round up like a 30-minute homily. Oh, goodness. Whew. All right. So we're, we finally made it to universal prayers. Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin right. Mary. Made it to the creed. So they did the creed. That's good. survived, died, and was buried. He didn't help. On the third day, he wrote. I thought the homily was going to be so long that we didn't get to the creed. Uh, that's. Oh, well, let me back up a little bit. I think after the homily, we had a little song. Oh, shooky, shooky now. Shooky, shooky now. Let's see what we got here. Let's see. We got a 43. This. What? Yeah, put up all your papers, Karen. You had about 20 of them. Everybody's giving her applause. Yes. Applause. Yes, applaud, Karen. Have. Then give it to me this joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. No, this joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. Well, 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 this peace that I have. The world didn't give it to me. This peace that I have. The world didn't give it to me. This peace that I have. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. Well, 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 this love that I have. The world can't give it to me. This love that I have. The world didn't give it to me. Me, this love that I have, world didn't give it to me. World didn't give it, world can't take it. Away. No, no, world didn't give it, world can't take it away. World didn't give it, world can't take it away. Oh my god. I, I don't even know what that was. Let me take a look at the homily. Is there like even supposed to be some sort of chant or some something after the homily? I don't I'm kind of lost. Let me let me let me go back. This this is weird. I'm sorry, number 17 says then follows the homily, which is be priest. Okay, at the end of the homily, the symbol profession or creed when it's Christ. No, no, this there's like no song after the homily. There's no song after a homily. That's not even a thing. But I, everyone is kind of like, I think, happy that there was a song after Karen's homily because now we can get Karen singing out of our head. Like, But it was replaced by that man singing, which was just marginally better, right? <laughs> you know, but I'm happy. I got Karen's her whatever that the singing she did is gone. Right? Oh man! All right. Well, let's get to the creed. I'm just interested in creed. I just want to see. I'm I'm curious. I'm not. I'm, gonna, I'm trying not to be too judgmental here, but um, <laughs> I'm, I'm just kind of curious. How many people like genuine? I mean, um, bow. 
um, when the creed says and became man. I'm I'm just curious. Let me let me just see. I I just think that's one of those marks that it, a healthy parish has a lot of people who recognize the incarnation event for what it was. In admirable exchange for what does God becoming man, so man can become like God. Um, we should. That's the most pivotal moment in all of the history of the universe. I'm, I, so I think people who recognize that and bow, um, doing a creed shows how. I mean, and, and granted, the Eastern Rite Catholics don't bow. Okay, so I know it's not universal. Everyone is not isn't prescribed to do it, but those who are prescribed to do it. Um, I like to see who who actually does it. So let's see. I'm I'm going to say only twenty percent show any sign of bowing of the people that we see. I'll say two out of ten. I'm taking wagers in the comments section right now. All right, plus or minus. 20%. If you think more than 20% are going to bow at the words they became man, um, make your wager. Or if you think if, if you think it's higher, let me know. If you think it's lower, let me know. Take the odds. High, low. You think more than 20% are going to bow or less than 20%, let me know in the comment box. All right. So here we go. With that joy in our heart, that is the best of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. Wait, hold up. He descended into hell. Oh! On the third so you're telling me they're not even doing an... Nicene Creed, they're doing the Apostles' Creed. <laughs> they're not even doing the Nicene Creed. Is that what you're telling me? Is that what you guys are telling me? They're, they're not even doing... <laughs> the, wait. They're not doing the Nicene Constantinople Creed. They're that lazy... <laughs> they're doing Apostles Creed, really? On a Sunday? What was was Karen's homily too long? They don't have time to do the Nicene Constantinople Creed. Are you serious? They're going for the apostles. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You tell me you can have Karen come in. Karen can come in and do a, a 30 minute homily. Let's just round up. She can do a 30 minute homily. You guys can do a song after the homily. Father, what's his name, can come in at the beginning of Mass and say, Hey, anybody remember me? We got time for that. We got time for that. We have time for all. The lady can come in at the beginning of the procession, take the book of the Gospels around to every person and have them kiss it and touch it. We get we got time for that, but we don't have time. We don't got time for the Nicene Constantinople Creed. Really, really, <laughs> wow! This is amazing. This is amazing. Wow. Wow. Day he rose again from the dead. He is sent into heaven. Wow. And is seated at the right hand of God. Wow. God, Father Almighty. From there he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints. <laughs> The forgiveness of sins and the resurrection. No 
light of the world. Trusting in a God who so, so deeply loves us, we raise our petitions on behalf of our sisters and brothers in need. All right, so now now we're at the we're at number twenty now. Um, we made it to the universal prayers, um, or prayer of the faithful, or the beating prayers. They have like three different names. We call them in a Norvis order. So, um, <laughs> I guess we got time for this. Looks like Zoro. What's Zoro doing back there? Azura is up to something. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Okay. I just want to make a notation right here. I just want to uh, make this note here. I'm going to write it down. <clears throat> that we are at the 46 minute mark here. Um, in the universal prayers. We're going to start at 46 and let's see where we end. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say it's going to be at least um, now I know I'm, I'm going to cheat a little bit because I know at the 53 minute mark I know there's a prayer that I want you guys to hear. So I know it goes on at least <clears throat> So at least what? What is that? Um, seven minutes. So I know it goes on at least seven minutes. But so, but I'm going to say it's going to go all together. I'm going to say it goes on 15 minutes. These universal prayers. I'll say the universal prayers are about 15 minutes shorter than Karen Tomley. Um, we we can go ahead and take. Um, um, unders and overs in the comment section. If you think the universal prayers are over 15 minutes, let me know. If you think they're under 15 minutes, let me know. Um, if you're just shocked at all that the universal prayers are longer than three minutes, also let me know that. Um, also, like this video. Thank you. <laughs> the people of God, the church that we might testify to the signs of the reign of God, sight to the blind, healing to the... Okay, I like how the universal prayers are starting off. I like how they're starting off. Um, she gave light, you know, sight to the blind. I mean, so far, the universal prayers sound kind of like the gospel. Alone. And we lift up the prayers from our parish website. May we all find... All right, just with this lady, we're at 48 minutes. So we started at 46. So just her alone, we're at... We're two minutes in. Let me skip forward um, to the 50-minute mark, to four minutes. Let, let's see. Emily and all who are suffering in either mind, body, or spirit... Okay, now what we're doing here, if, if you never saw this before, there was another mass nightmare where we saw this before, where um, <clears throat> someone, the universal prayers goes out to the, they just go around with a microphone asking everybody for their prayer intentions, right? It turns into some sort of Protestant-like intercessory prayer at church thing. You know, at the Protestant church service, they'd be having these, like intercessory prayers where Everybody just kind of pitches in. Um, it looks like they're doing that. So everybody's just going to go around pitching their own prayers. So we're now we're at, we're four minutes in. Let us pray. I would like to ask prayers for our family, 
um, within the last month, we have suffered the death of three of our family. Um, many of you. All right. Um, all right. So let's go ahead. So I want to show you this prayer at 53. Watch this one. That he has exuded for the next six. All right. There we go. I think I guess it's at 52. Let me see. Mother, to just be with them and hope. All right. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe it's 50. Let me go back a little bit. Within the last five years, she lost her husband. All right. Just dropped so this lady right here right now who, who's praying for her family member, um, who I guess a lot of people died in her family. But so, yeah, let's pray for that intention. But um, then she adds on another prayer after this one. Um, that's the one I want you that I'm very excited about. I want you to hear it one morning at home. Her brother who lives in Seattle, they found him dead in his apartment. So that's uh, a lot of pain for her to suffer in such a short time. <clears throat> so for this and for all people who suffer similarly, we ask prayers and we ask the Blessed Mother to just be with them and hold their hands as we all experience this grief. Thank you. Lord, hear our prayers. I ask your prayers for the newly reelected. Oh, no, it wasn't her. It wasn't Lady. What well, people, everyone died in her family. Um, it was a lady next to her. The lady with the white hair right here um, in like the red um, crushed velvet coat. Listen to her prayer. This is amazing. So it was about 53. Okay, I was right. I just had the wrong person. Hear our prayers. I ask your prayers for the newly reelected Senator Warnock that he may continue to have the hope that he has exuded for the next six years and beyond, and that he also have the endurance that is needed as he reaches across the aisle in his work of bipartisanship. May he continue to be a role model for us. For this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. <laughs> This lady in a Catholic mass doing a universal prayers. Yes, I, I, I'm not. I'm not. You know, I'm not going to disparage her praying for Senator Warnock. He, he needs prayer. He, he needs exorcism, actually. But okay. But she <laughs> she went on and called him some sort of role model, and for the Lord to bless him in a work as he reaches across what aisle. But the owl to Satan? <laughs> Warnock isn't reaching across any owl. Not, not whatsoever. The only thing he's he's reaching across is is a, a reach over. Because <laughs> he's a skittle, a fake reverend, a baby killer. I mean, Warnock is the most demonic person. It, it, I mean, the whole thing about Warnock is just, just so amazing to me. It, it just really is. Basically, the city of Atlanta elected this guy, right? Atlanta, the, the city of Atlanta has third world levels, like 1990s levels that you will find in, in places in Africa, in the Congo, HIV levels. Third world levels in Atlanta of people who have HIV from homosexuality. That's Atlanta. It has the highest HIV rates in the world. In the world. Atlanta. From Atlanta is Sodom and Gomorrah. More babies die in Atlanta from abortion than, than are born. More babies are killed there than born. It's a cesspool of demonic activity. And Warnock wants more abortion and he wants more homosexuality. And this lady at this mass calls him a role model. And says, 
we pray that he reaches across the aisle. This guy isn't reaching. He's reaching for his seat in hell. And everyone says, um, and everyone responds in the affirmative to her prayer. That's crazy. That's crazy. This is the thing that when you, when you do this at, at masses, right? When, when you, when you turn over the universal prayers to the congregation, this is the type of crap that happens. This is why you don't do it. People are sick. You don't know what somebody's going to pray for. This lady just prayed for the devil. Warnock, the hand of Satan himself. Pray for the man be blessed in his work. That that's 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 psycho. That's psycho. That's psycho. But we're we're at so we're at 53. So we're at um seven minutes now. So I'm gonna skip ahead another three minutes to round it up to 12 minutes. Well, yes, yeah, so yeah, 12. All right, let's just see at 10 minutes, see if it's still going to 10. Spiritual, mental, emotional. Yep, they're still going at 10. Um, so that was 56. Uh, 54, let me add another six minutes. Yep, they're still going, and they're like doing like the Zoom prayers now. People who are online are offering their prayers now. We're... we're what is this? 12 minutes now? Yeah, 12 minutes now. This is this is Heavenly Father, Mother God. I just want to say a prayer of thanksgiving. Special, special Thanksgiving. I had my 85th birthday on Friday, and Jesus has brought me a mighty long way. Last year, I spent my birthday in the hospital. I had a serious heart condition and pneumonia and I had three hospitalizations in December. And I am, thank God, blessed with health care and medication, good doctors, and all the things that every person, every human being should have. <clears throat> I, I just can't with these Democrats, man. They just... Crazy. All right, it looks like the universal prayers are finally over. Uh, is our joy. And uh, it looks like we made it to about the 104. We started at, I think, 46. So that's 14 minutes plus another four. So, yeah. Um, if you took the over on 15 minutes, you won. You won your, um, you won your bragging rights on the mass nightmares. Um, so, so what what happens next in mass? What what happens next after the universal prayers? Um, we head into the the third part of the mass, which is the liturgy of the Holy Eucharist. Uh, I guess the interesting thing here is going to be just the sign of peace and um. We'll skip over the prayers of consecration. I did check. He does say, um, he, he does pray the prayers of consecration correctly. He doesn't say for all. He does say for many. I took a look at that before the show. So that's good. So let's take a look at a sign of peace, and then we'll head to the conclusion, right? And, um, and, you know, according to Anatomy of a Mass Nightmare, the sign of peace is, like, really distracting the communion, right? It has 100% participation. And the concluding rite, um, the announcements are about, they're almost as long as the Mass. So let's see if they hit all, all three of those. See if they get the trifecta. Our position and our lawyer. Our... 
to their peace. The doctors are not the doctor. Our joy and our physician and our lawyer, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Uh, of course, he says sisters and brothers, not brothers and sisters, as the Roman Missile says he should, because he's, he's a simp. Now, in a COVID safe manner, let us offer one another sign of that peace. In a COVID safe manner, I don't know what that is, um, but let's let's find out what that is. I, I I didn't even know COVID was still a thing. I mean, I know people still die from it, obviously, right? Um, you know, like people die of you know lots of viruses, but um, yeah, I, I didn't know you still had to say in in a COVID safe manner, but. Uh, I mean, he's wearing a mask after all. So, uh, yeah, it is. I guess that's what you get with that. Father, peace. Peace be with you. Like who who is this lady in the middle of the church? <laughs> let's take a look at her and let's take a look and look at over there um Zorro to see what see what she's doing. What endeavor. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Now, in a COVID safe manner, let us offer one another a sign of that peace. Father, peace. And the whole COVID safe thing looks different for whatever, right? Some people are hugging, right? Some people are not. All right, we're shit. Okay, here comes this lady here in um, the, the black and white print. Um, in the, the rose-colored um, blouse, right? She comes out to the middle of the nave <laughs> to give, just give the whole world the sign of peace. The two-finger peace sign to everyone. Peace and, she's, she, and she's blowing kisses. And she's bowing. Oh my gosh. Was this a performance? And she's given hugs. Peace be with you. Thank you so much for being here. And she's given taps. I mean, she has everything going on. She, this lady is phenomenal. And she's like having a whole conversation. And she's not stopping. And she's giving more hugs. She's just and pats in a listen. She gave the hug, and like the pat after the hug. I mean, that's that's all world right there. <clears throat> Look at this, the hug, the hug. Look, the hug. <clears throat> all right. And it's not even like a Christian hug, you know, like, you know, you know what a, a good Christian hug looks like, you know, a good Christian hug, you know, you, most of your body's like leaning in like this, right? And your, you know, your hips and your butt are way back here. And there's no, like, there's no touching of, you know, the lower body, you know, a good Christian hug looks like that. This lady just has the whole full body with this guy. They, they must know each other, right? The arms are up closer to the shoulder blades. All right, so this this is a very interpersonal hug, and if I recall, this guy came looking for it. Let me let me let me go back a little bit. I think he he, I think he wanted this. Yeah, there he, is that him? Like he's acting like he doesn't want it, right? He he's walking up. This how this how men do sometimes, right? They're trying to play coy, right? <laughs> <laughs> and like he doesn't want it, right? 
you you know sometimes men we try to um do the accidental um encounter right we, we try to perfectly time out the encounter right i've been doing it since what third grade no second grade the second grade i, I think i mastered it with yeah, dolores jones right timed it perfectly I was coming out of my class. I went around the corner. I saw Dolores Jones come. Her name was Dee Dee. We call her Dee Dee. And I saw her coming. And so I backed up a little bit. And I was like, if I could just time it perfectly, I will finally be able to just touch Dee Dee. Right? I had this big crush on Dee Dee. And so I timed it perfectly. And like, I like bumped her head. Right? And she went to the clinic. And she's mad at me for like, for a long time. I also saw her. Also shot Didi with a BB gun. For some reason, she's walking past the house, had a BB gun, and I shot her. You know, that's what boys do. You know, if we like a girl, we just, you know, do violent things to them, you know? Um, later on in life, I think I was, what, 30-something, right? Um, bumped into her, and we dated for a little while. You know, it didn't work out. I don't know why. But, um, yeah, we, we, we do these things, these chance encounters. But um, here's this guy trying to um, arrange a chance encounter. Look at him. Look, look, he looks over. Look, look, look. Did you see him? Did you see him? Did you see him? <laughs> look, 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 look. <laughs> look at this guy. He's a creep. Look, 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 look at this guy. <laughs> Here he comes. Here he comes. He sees her. He sees her, right? <coughs> She's busy. She's busy. And he's just hoping, okay, okay. I, I don't want to look too desperate. I don't want to like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm um, you know, I don't want to look too creepy here. Right. He's gonna position himself. And he's kind of nervous too, because and the reason why he he's and the reason why he's nervous because the sign, you know, the right of the sign of peace of unpeacefulness is about to end, right? And he's he's kind of desperate. He's like, oh man, am I gonna get my chance? Am I gonna get my shot? And I don't want to blow my shot, right? And he's nervous because it's about the end. He doesn't want to like look like he's the last person, right? He doesn't want like he's that's all he's there for, right? But he is, that's why he came to mass. Look at him. Here he goes. <laughs> yeah, Joe Biden style. <laughs> Look at him. He's looking. You see him looking? You see him looking? He's, he's moving up a little bit. Oh, they make eye contact. They make eye contact. She sees him looking at her. She puts down whatever was given to her. Uh-huh. And then she walks out. Look, look, look. Look at all that body contact right there. And then the tap on the waist. It was three taps. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, and a shoulder touch. See, that's a Christian I hug he gave her. Yes. When look at him. Look at this guy. Creep. Mass creep. Uh, Yes, since Jesus has come to stay, I have hope, yes, when things are not well with me, I have a hope, it's a beautiful hope that sets me free, I have a hope, it's a beautiful hope. That sets me free, and I want to say thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, and I just want to thank you. All right, all right. Uh, so what's going on now? So good. 
All right, so we got the offering plate about to go around. We'll skip that. We'll skip that. Or run to us, man. in him. So that in all our. All right, now we got the communion right. We're just going to take a look at this to see what type of participation we get. Looks like about a hundred percent participation, as we would, you know, expect. Got Creeper Joe here as Usher, bringing up the end. We got some people leaving early. The lady right there, who prayed for Warnock, um, she's leaving early. Look at her; she got her communion. Jesus, Lord, amen. The Warnock lady who prayed for the devil, she's leaving mass early. I mean, how fake is that? You 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 pray for the devil and you can't even stay for the end of mass. You can't even stay for the final blessing. Fake. That's tell you. While we are waiting, come. While we are waiting, come. Jesus. All right. Enough of that. Nobody's bowing. Nobody's kneeling. Nobody's receiving on the tongue that we see. Jesus, our Lord. All right. But it's, it's not like we expected any of that. All right. Let's get to the... um. Including, right? The schedule of Christmas. Man, let's see how long this goes on. Oh, my goodness. A lot of people left. A lot of people left. A lot of people left early. I mean, I know what I left early. I mean, one, I think they know the announcements are going to be like an hour long, right? Um, the second reason I probably left early because they got the bulletin and they read the announcements so they don't have to stay. <laughs> and third, you know, no one wants to hear the singing. I think that's the three reasons why people left early. All right. Oh my goodness. No. All right, finally it's finally over. We implore your mercy, O Lord, that the power of these divine mysteries may free us from sin and prepare us for the approaching feast of Christmas. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. And let the church say, Amen. I know we got an announcement. Good morning, church. My morning. Name is Laurie. All right, all right. Just just to check, we're at the um one thirty two mark at a mass. And um, where is the general instruction? Where is the order of the mass? All right, here's the order of the mass. <clears throat> Concluding rites, number number one forty. Number one forty. If they are necessary. If they are necessary. This is what the Roman Missal says. Any brief announcements to the people follow here. If they are necessary. So let's see what this church deems to be necessary. So we're starting at the 
133 mark. This week, our Advent Reconciliation Service will be Thursday, December 15th at 7 p.m. Make a date with the Lord to strengthen your relationship. All right, this lady's just reading out the bulletin. All right, so we're at 133. Let me go to 136. Go three minutes in. For Christmas, but my expectations were blown away. So you got another lady thing. talking about something. So that means you all who didn't get it have the opportunity somewhere in the very near future. We will have DVDs available for sale. She's talking about some DVDs for sale. All right. So another, let's go another three minutes to 39. Also, S still talking. Family to surround her with love. And People are raised. I think there's, this looks like a blessing. People are standing their hands and blessing Happy something. Birthday. Happy birthday to oh, they're singing "Happy Birthday," somebody's birthday. Oh yeah, yeah. Birthday wishes at the end of mass. That's important. Those are necessary. All right. So, um, if they are necessary, any brief announcements to the people follow here. So birthday greetings are also necessary at St. Columba. All right, so we got birthday greetings. So we're like yeah. 10 minutes in. celebrate the Eucharist with you. It's always a pleasure and honor. It's been a long, long time. I'm really very was looking forward to this day. It's coming back. I got a Jason, Jason said it was a DVD. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Why is this lady hawking some DVDs? <laughs> Who uses never mind. Never mind. Jason, you have to look at who's there. You have to look at who's there. Everybody there right now at mass has was called a dvd player so um in fact everyone who's sitting there also has what's called a beta and a vhs player right just look at them this this church probably has beta and vh vhs tapes for sale um and they probably sell like hotcakes. So no, they they know very well what a DVD is and Blu-ray, all that stuff. A lot of these people here still go get their movies from Blockbuster, right? They they can't find it, but they they go try to find Blockbuster. So yeah, it's it's yeah yeah. Don't worry about that, Jason. I'll share with you, Gaudete Day Sunday is a difficult Sunday. For for me, it's the one time out of the year that the priest is expected to wear <laughs> the big pink. But it's all it's all in order to rejoice. Amen. So if you get stressed out this week, remember Karen's message. Awesome. But also remember the big pink. That is Stan. I'm going to ask Father Hillary to uh, join me in this blessing. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
Let us go in peace. Soon and very soon, or die then, we are gold. Bye, Karen. The seas again. No more dying then. We are going to see the game. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to see the game. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to see. All right. All right. All right. All right. So that is the. Nightmare for tonight. Appreciate you guys hanging in. It was a long one. We haven't done the one in a while, so I forget what I was doing. But um, if you remember what you're supposed to do, um, let's see how you graded this mass nightmare. What type of grade would you give it on a scale of the A, B, C, D, E, F, E, A, B, C, D, F scale? How would you grade it? Let me just recap a couple of things. Um, as far as the mass nightmare goes, it hit a lot of the marks. We had a uh, messy procession, right? We had some self indulgent clapping. We had a lay homilist. Um, we did have a legitimate prayer consecration. We had a, a messy universal prayer. We had the whole Warnock thing. We had Zorro back there doing some things. Um, we had um, the whole, there was no creed. They went with the Apostles' Creed for reasons unknown to all of us. Um, the mass began with Father saying, starting like, like a comedy skit, does anybody remember me? Raise your hand. It ended with announcements that went over, that was about, Mm, 30% as long as the homily was, which was like 25 minutes, 30 minutes. Um, so there, yeah, there was a lot there. How, how, would, how would you grade it? Um, Jason is going to grade it. Um, he's going to give it a D <laughs> for <a> DVD. <laughs> uh, in I can't read that vignettes gives it an F minus a zero percent. Um, Mercedes is also coming in with an F. Hey, Mercedes. Thank you. You snuck in late, didn't you? Glad to see you here, my friend. Um, Adam Athoria is good to see you here tonight as well. Everyone's here. Um, F. Colin, thanks for coming back. Um, happy to see you again. Um, Yvonne, thanks for coming tonight. D for demonic. AC, glad to see you here. Come back again. ABC DVD. <laughs> uh, thanks for coming in. Tell me how to pronounce that last part. Um, Z for Zorro. Yeah, that, that's very good. That's very good. Um, my friend Margaret Mary's coming in with an F. Colin A10 for truth and reality. <laughs> uh, David Vlog Day. <laughs> oh man. Uh, Mercedes, hey, Mercedes, yeah. Um, were there any altar servers? No. Yeah, we didn't see any altar servers at all. I think probably because of COVID. There's still COVID in um, Oakland. So that's probably why I don't have altar service. <laughs> all right, my friends. I appreciate you guys. Uh, again, please like this show if you haven't already before you leave. And I will see you on Wednesday for a recorded show. And um, hopefully we can do another mass nightmare um, around Christmas time. Let's see. Let's see with what the Lord blesses us with. <laughs> all right. I'll see you all on the next time. God bless and peace.